What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. Thank you for joining in. And today we have the honor and privilege of being joined by Marco Polo. Thank you for coming through, sir. What up? Thanks for yes. having me. Yes. So Marco Polo and Master H just put out the new Richmond Hell album. Definitely check it out in stores worldwide, stream, download, purchase, vinyl, all kinds of stuff. So for, for you, since a lot of this uh, album, the skits, and some of the things are tied to your experience and your life, et cetera. What made you want to take that approach on the skits and the interludes in particular? That was 100% Master Ace's idea. I would have never suggested to focus the album on my life, which we did on Broken Story and Richmond Hill. Um, so I trusted him, and he thought my story was interesting, and he thought I should share it. So I trusted him. And that's why we're here now with these concepts. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And since you've uh, worked and done a lot of collaborative albums over the years, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Torrey, Hannibal Stacks, Afro, others, Rush Jux, of course, and even Ace now multiple times. When you work with Ace, what's been the difference you see artistically, creatively that he brings, you know, that puts him in his own category, his own style? Um. Ace has so many things going on that he brings to the table as an artist. Uh, the art of making an album, which is a lost art, like a conceptual album, um, writing songs about things that really resonate with people, concepts or stories. You know, I think he's a master at that. Um, yeah, and in a in a really cool way that seems to like reach a lot of people all over the world because when we go to Europe. He's got so many supporters and fans. It's really, really cool to see. But yeah, he's just a professional. He knows what he's doing, man. You know, he's he's great at picking beats. Um, he's great at making albums, and he's just consistently able to make music that people connect with. And I'm just, I'm just here. I'm here to provide the the musical landscape for whatever he wants to talk about next. Okay. And then, as the producer on Brooklyn Heights' uh, song from Richmond Hill, you have. You know, he references Bismarcky. You guys put Bismarcky's voice and sounds and stuff throughout the song. So as a producer, uh, when you add those type of things uh, to the finished product and you hear Ace referring to him but not, you know, explicitly saying pick and boogers per se, uh, what do you think that adds the extra dimensions to the song for the listener and then for you as an artist? I mean, those are in very important little details that a producer has to listen for. So, if, yeah, if Ace is, if Ace lays his, his verse and his lyrics and records his vocals, and I hear little things that I can accent with musical elements or, you know, a line from a song he's referencing, and I try it and I put it in there, I'm going to do it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I knew that was a Bismarck key reference, rest in peace, that was his his Juice Crew uh, affiliate and friend. So I was like, let me try and bring, you know, accent some of the things he's saying. If you listen to Connections, we do it too. You know, we put tons of lines and sound effects and things to accent what he's saying because he's saying so much. And sometimes it's hard to catch. you got to listen to it. So if we can put a, a Chuck D line or Ludacris or something like that, we're going to do it. Okay. Gotcha. And then was Certified... I talked to Ace about this, but that was one beat in particular I was shocked that he rapped on. And he had told me you also were very surprised that he picked it. So what what made you not think he would want it? And then once you started working on it, why do you think it works? Uh, I don't know if I necessarily thought he wouldn't want it. It just wouldn't wasn't something typical that I would make and send to him. I'm pretty sure Shy, my buddy Shiloh, after I made that beat, he probably influenced me sending it to him. Maybe he probably was like 100%. You should send that to Ace. And I think, you know, Ace likes to try different things too. We've, we've been doing this for a long time. So it's important to like change it up and take risks musically. Even though when I listen to that beat, it just sounds like some up-tempo b-boy shit to me. It's not like it's, you know, so off the map. It still feels like some hip-hop stuff. But tempo-wise, it's a bit faster. So it all worked out. He picked it. And, you know, sometimes those little risks and trying different things result in amazing things and coast contra just complemented it so absolutely so as a producer with the uh, hero and below the clouds hero as inspector deck 
Inspector Deck was famously on Gangster as Above the Clouds, which Ace references at the beginning of the song. So why did why did you have him on Hero, and how did that happen where he's not on Below the Clouds? Good question. I mean, that was really Ace. We just felt Deck was going to be good on Hero. It was one of the first joints we recorded to the album. We recorded for the album, sorry. So, yeah. Um... That's a good question. Did you ask Ace that question? <laughs> no, that's for part two. Cause, uh, yeah. I think, but I also think he called it below the clouds because this, you know, the, the voices and the beats, they, they reference weather and clouds. So, um, by the time he recorded for that, Inspector Deck had already laid his verse for Hero. So, it, you know, that was that. So, okay. yeah. And below, below the clouds, too, uh, I didn't look into it to see if it's the same samples, but it also felt like a somewhat reminiscent of a slowed down Jesus Walks beat. Did you do you hear that, or can you get that, or is that? I don't know if I hear that. <laughs> if you got that, that's cool. Everyone like interprets music differently. It's definitely has nothing to do with that song or that sample. Um, but if it makes you feel like that, maybe because of the voices, that's that's cool. Uh, I'm not mad at that. But yeah, they're completely different samples. Okay. And then uh, Life Music is the single for Richmond Hill and has gotten a lot of great response that I've seen uh, both online and, you know, talking to people and stuff. That being said, I wanted you to break down um, that balance of how do you work with Ace as far as the content? Because on the one side, this is a business and you're trying to sell and be you know, make a living at it. On the other hand, it's talking about loving life and living a long time, and that's very atypical with rap. So how do you balance conveying those type of messages with delivering a great song? I think me and Ace are still in the business of music and making music and touring because we don't think about the business when we're creating. We literally, it's the Latin. At no point have we ever sat down and said, we need to make something to sell more records. We need to make something to cross over. Like we've never done that and we'll never do that. We literally just make music we want to hear. We're both hip hop heads and fans of, of hip hop and music. And we just literally try and make stuff that we love. That's it. There's no other, obviously we know this is how we make our living, but that has never thankfully been the driving force to the creative side of things ever. So thank God for that. Yes. That being said, what, uh, why is that something that's never mattered to you? Well, I wouldn't say that it doesn't matter. We obviously want our music to reach people and do well and be successful. But I just think people gravitate. People can hear it. People, listeners aren't stupid, you know? When artists go and deliberately do something that's unauthentically them, like, you know it. You're like, I hear it all the time. I'm like, oh, they're trying to do a radio song. They're trying to do this. Like music's the best when it feels good and it sounds natural for that artist, whatever it is. So I think essentially sticking to what me and Ace love, that's the selling point. We're not, you know, we're not trying to <laughs> trying to make a radio single. We're just trying to make music that, that you know, touches people and resonates with people. And when I'm sitting down to make beats, I'm just trying to really impress myself. You know, I'm trying to do something that I would want to to bump and try things that, you know, that I like. Okay. And with Life Music uh, speeches on there at the end, how and why did you guys uh, get him on there? That was a Master Ace idea. He has a relationship with speech and he asked him to get on that song and try some things. And uh, yeah, we ended up using some of his vocals for the final version. Um yeah, and that song is really cool because, you know, it gave Strickland an opportunity to speak on some life experiences and just in general, you know. Um, so, yeah. And do you, as a producer, do you find yourself when it is a very personal, very topical thing, like health, for instance, in Strickland's instance, uh, does that hit? hit you harder hit you in a different way does it mean more to you or is it just the same as a super hilarious creative line i mean for me that song hits hard because 
sorry, for me that hits hard because Strickland's my brother and he had a he had a rough year. So him talking about some of the things while it might be kind of a, a general look at what was going on, I was there, you know, so I know what he's talking about and I was there. So, it, it you know, it feels good that he, you know, he overcame some of the things that were going on. But it's more about the message to people that, you know, um, to live your life to the fullest and, you know, whatever message you get from that life, it's supposed to be an uplifting song, you know, to make you feel good. Like you want to get up in the morning and go do stuff, be motivated. So. Yeah. And how, uh, given that you saw it personally, when you hear this song, how does that affect you as a person? I guess what I take away from that song is gratitude. If I had to say there was a message for it, is just to be grateful that I'm living. You know, we've all been, everyone in life has things going on. You know, everyone's got some sort of issues. No, nothing's perfect. We all have loss. We've all lost family members or friends to death, to disease. There's always struggles. And that's just like, for me, what I take from that song is, you know, just do the best you can and, and have gratitude for what you do have. And, Keep pushing, you know, not to sound corny, but, you know, keep going. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And then Heat of the Moment is a harder, slower beat that you have on Richmond Hill. And I think one of the things that I enjoyed about the album is the different sounds, the different feels and everything. So how did these collection of beats kind of work for you in the way that they did, you know, as a package, realizing that you need to you know, make a thorough album that's going to have things that stand out like certified, for instance. Heat of the moment was just another beat that I made that I thought Ace would dig and I sent it to him and uh, he picked it. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like starting a puzzle when you do an album. It always starts with three or four joints. But I mean, really to simplify the work process for me and Ace is I sit here and create beats and after many years working with Ace, I'd like to think I have a good idea of what he likes and, and, and doesn't like. So if I make something that I know he might dig, it gets sent to him first. Like I send him beats before anybody else. Like I've let go of send. I don't send beats to a million artists. I'm not trying to work with a million MCs. There's definitely people I will send beats to, but I really, I save the best or the cream of the crop of stuff that I do for Ace now that we're, you know, kind of going in a group direction. So Sometimes I know I'm like, oh, that sounds like an ace beat. You gotta send that to him. You know, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, and that's that. Yeah, there wasn't. I didn't make that for him. I just made that and knew that he might like it. Okay. And do you? Uh, how has uh, approaching sending him stuff first? How is, does that uh, affect your output? If you used to make five beats a day, now you're only making three. Like, does that affect it at all, or no? No, I've never been a producer to make five beats in a day. That's just not my workflow. I'll be happy to make one beat that I like a day. And and these days it's even less. Like I've barely been in the studio. Um, yeah, things are different for me now. I, I'm, I'm real motivated by projects and having a reason to create. It's not like when I first started making beats, I just made beats for the sake of making beats. But if there's not like a project I need to do or an artist that wants something, yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard for me to get that inspiration. So um i'm very much project driven um yeah and i'd rather yeah i'd rather come in here with a purpose sometimes and just do it because i gotta do it and how when and why did that change for you just getting older <laughs> but i've also but because of the many years of just making tons of beats i've got this archive and library of beats and i i want to use them so instead of like you know, I think as you get older, at least for me, I just work smarter instead of like harder. Is you know, I got a lot of beats. Like I have, I have a few albums worth of beats just sitting around that are really great. Um, and I, you know, so I come up here and I work when I feel like working, as opposed to like forcing myself to do it, which is what I did for many years. Um, so yeah, if there's something I need to be up here for, I'm up here working my ass off, inspired. But yeah, just coming up here because like, oh, I'm a producer, I need to make beats. It doesn't work like that for me anymore. And how? So what are you? What are you doing with that time that you're not using making beats like you used to? Making sure my business is right. Uh, many other things. Uh, buying records. Um, planning things out. Um, yeah, because it's great to do all this work, but what are you going to do with it? Now it's like I've done the work. I have all this 
this material, this music, you know, now it's time to focus on planning what to do with that stuff. I want people to hear it. I don't want to leave this earth with 18,000 beats that just sit on my laptop. I want to like put all these years of work into something, whether that's a beat tape or an album with an artist or a drum kit. It's really just about figuring out what to do with the work I've done all these years. Hmm. So given uh, that, how do you balance not creating something with the business in mind, but then afterwards knowing that you have to take care of the business? How do you... Well, that's the thing. A lot of this stuff is created before with just, just out of pure joy of an inspiration of all these, you know, I have all these records in my room. That's where it starts. Um, but yeah, I think working for 15 years nonstop on beats, I have this crazy library. So now it's like, you know, like if all goes well, me and Ace will do a third album and we've got a big chunk of beats already picked out for that. It's already good because of because I've already been working for years. So he slowly picks beats. Um, so yeah. And yeah, just so many things going on now. I do a lot of sound design for Akai, which is a blessing. And I'm making all these expansions expansions for producers to use in their beats. Yeah, it's 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 different than how it was now. And what uh, do you get differently creatively out of those other endeavors? Not really, not really, because if I'm making a bunch of drum kits or expansions or things for producers, it's still the same process. Hey, Mark will make a bunch of sounds that a producer would hear and be like, "I want to make beats with that." So, you know, all these years of 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 owning my craft and coming up with a sound. And I think a lot of people know me for my drums, and that's essentially why I'm able to start working with some of these companies because producers want drums, and that's the backbone of hip hop, and that's my specialty. So now, when I'm creating songs or working with musicians to create songs that's or, or sounds that sound like samples, I'm just doing it. I'm making beats. I'm trying to like make beats that are dope, and then share those sounds with future producers to use in their in their you know songs and their beats. <laughs> 